Donnybrook is made possible by the support of the Betsy and Thomas Patterson Foundation and the members of 9PBS. Thanks for joining us for another edition of Donnybrook. My goodness, it was 63 degrees today at 2 o'clock, while in Key West, Florida, it was only 66. So who needs Florida when you have weather like this and a panel like this seated around the big table, starting with Wendy Weiss from the Big 550 KTRS. Bill McClellan from the St. Louis Post-Dispatch. Ray Hartman, another one of our founders. He also founded the Riverfront Times, and you follow his column on Substack. There he is, Alvin Reed from the St. Louis American, where he writes a column and edits the news. And a very sad note to begin this evening's show, and that is that we lost... Uh, Former U.S. Senator Jean Carnahan, who died unexpectedly this week after a brief illness. Um, she was the first woman to represent Missouri in the U.S. Senate. Ray, I was impressed by the number of people from both sides of the aisle who took time out of their days to extend their condolences to the Carnahan family, Republicans and Democrats. Absolutely, and she was just a great woman and the nicest person. And she had that amazing food blog. She was remarkably talented and um, so certainly the Carnahan's are known as a great political family I had the you know, really honor to know her and she was so graceful at that horrible time when she lost her her, her, her husband and her son in mm. the plane crash and Chris close, Sifford, and Chris Sifford. Uh, but um, she is surely a life well lived yeah. right you are I will say I was lucky enough to have lunch with her she introduced me to Antonina's uh, Taverna on the hill last year and she was so witty, intelligent, bright, and kind. And I filled in on KMOX Radio on December 29th, and I wanted to have her on the show. And I saw because because she had that food blog you mm -hmm. talked about, and she said, "No, I'm going to be on the farm, and the phone doesn't work too well." And do uh, you know she she actually made her last entry to the food blog, which is an amazing work. She has reviewed hundreds of restaurants her last entry was january the 20th wow so she lived a very full yes, life she did. absolutely so, she was a great representative of our state our thoughts and prayers with the carnahan's at this difficult time ray we're going to ask you to kick off tonight's uh, topics with a look at Cori bush the congresswoman from st louis this week did confirm that the u.s department of justice is investigating her over what they i guess think are some improprieties with campaign spending she has spent more money on security than any other member of the House over the past three years, more than $700,000, some of it going to her now husband, who started off as a bodyguard, and then they became, uh, I guess they fell in love. Uh, she said uh, there's nothing to these allegations. Do you think it's going to hurt her? What do you, what's your take here? I think it's hard to tell. I, I think the facts are great, but I have mixed feelings, uh, you know, um, for one thing, I, I'm, you know, stated I'm not a big fan of hers as, at this point, but I, part of me, think, I don't agree, you know, she did the standard politician thing, it's, it's a conservative witch hunt or something, it's not that. I don't question the motives. I don't love the timing. Uh, you know, it's one thing if there's a certain period of time that the government has before an election that they won't indict somebody. In this case, what bothers me a bit about the timing is it's seven months before a primary, and they're basically just talking about the investigation. Uh, and I, I just don't, I don't like that timing. The other thing I'll say is I don't know that it'll hurt her for the same reason that so many of these allegations don't hurt people. Everybody's so can't, entrenched in their bases and their followers that I, I think it's impossible to read right now whether you know she'll be able to take these and raise money off of it and i, I don't know i don't know well, how well, as far as the timing goes though ray th these congressmen and women have to run every two years mm -hmm. right. so there's you're always coming up on a primary or coming up on an election and i think that uh, you know just given the fact that she's known for her to fund the police stuff that she's spending so much money on security raises eyebrows and I think that as far as uh, the polit 
politics go, I don't know whether it will hurt her, but I think it helps Biden when, you know, all, all of the Republicans are after him for being after all of the MAGA people. And you can say, hey, the senator from New Jersey, Menendez. Right. And, and now the uh, liberal Democrat from Missouri, Cory Bush. Uh, I, and I, th I think it will hurt her. I think, I think it's more than just the amount of money that was spent. I think it is who it was spent with. And I'm just one of those people that believe that once I'm, if I ran for office and I'm in an office, if you're my d wife, daughter, whatever, you're not going to work in my office or for me or anything like that. Maybe I'll use my influence to get you a job someplace, not in government. But I just, I've always took a dim view of that. And I think there's still enough Americans that do that's part of it. And Ray, I will tell you what, I think it'd be more so than a, a liberal witch hunt than a conservative witch hunt. As far as Cori Bush is concerned, I think this might be coming from her own side. And that's the point that, that's the point that uh, yeah. Five on Your Side and some of the other um, articles were, they, they were making. Uh, was that maybe she has, because this is Joe Biden's Justice Department, so, you know, it was inferred that maybe she said something that he wasn't too keen on, and the fact that she's leaning into Courtney Merritt's position, and he has so much That's experience, her husband. her husband, there are a lot of people with security experience if you're going to do that. Also, the fact that so many members of her team her own team had warned her against doing this kind of thing well, because of the appearance of impropriety. It's Pride. obvious. It's so ironic that she's the one who wants to defund the police and ends up spending the most money on security. I can recall when I would interview Claire McCaskill back in the days at KMOX Radio, Claire McCaskill was a U.S. Senator. She would drive herself to one memorial drive. She had no assistant, no That's bodyguard. Right. She wouldn't do it now. Yeah, well, well, she well, would, I, 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 don't I don't know about now. Would no. see, Charlie, you, think, you, think, you think times are more dangerous now than they were in the 60s? I don't think so. Absolutely. I don't think so. 1968, what kind of memory do you have, Charlie? Charlie, I completely disagree with that. I don't think in the 60s they were they were trailing politicians to their favorite restaurants and their I, homes and everything else. I really object to the whole, and both sides do it, and in her case, trying to make the, the, go to the motives of the prosecution. I think there's a case to be made here. As I said, it seems to me, I wouldn't have any problem if they were bringing a case now. I just don't like the fact that they're just leaking it and it's out there now. But having said that, because I just don't, you know, because... I, I remember I, in the media, you can't you you can't be against people leaking I, I did, stuff. We're always trying okay. To but wait a minute. Wait, but didn't someone stuff. didn't someone say on the House floor well, he that to. there is a no, that's correct. Well, the sergeant that's arms correct. had to and say, and rather than no, everybody, no, yeah, you're, right? You're right. They said the no. Sergeant, I'll, I'll give leaked. you that. Right. The sergeant arms could have been her own office okay, that leaked. Here's it. the deal. Here's what I, as far as your point, <laughs> I don't have, and I I think I said there's bad facts here. I'm not defending her at all, other than to say on the security point. I, the idea that you criticize somebody for having too much security because they're controversial, I just think it's wrong. I'm not worried about that. I don't like mm. that. What Alvin pointed out is right. The fact that I she's not a wait, boyfriend wait, slash husband wait, doing it just is one, the okay. issue. Well, but what not that she has security. Thought. She's not a D. She's a P. And this is still months after, while the war is raging in Gaza, months after she made what was really uh, believed to be around the world, unless, of course, you are pro Palestinian, she calling for um, a, a withdrawal of Israeli aid the day of the massacre. That put a very, I yeah. think that's put a very okay. bright target. Okay. Real, let's quick. move on. Real quick, the police don't protect Congress people. You right. might, I think the police, let's say wherever I'm from, I think the police need to be looked into and they're bad and all that. But the police don't protect me. They're bad? No, no, I'm saying hypothetically, oh. no matter where you're from, whatever problem you may have with the police, that's not who protects you when you're in you Washington, D.C. Yeah, okay. 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 okay, okay, okay. Apparently police, not. But okay. This has nothing to do but with it. Hey, Wendy Weiss, come on. Let's, let's move okay, along, okay. you guys. Okay. Sorry, sorry. Uh, Wendy, Josh Hawley, the senior senator from the state of Missouri, uh, got headlines all over the nation. And he was on NPR, every broadcast source talking about yesterday's judiciary, Senate Judiciary meeting, when there were five heads of social media sites, including Mark Zuckerberg from Meta. Meta. He oversees Facebook and Instagram and WhatsApp and others. And uh, after grilling Zuckerberg about some of the problems that Hawley sees with Instagram in particular, how there are predators who are abusing and threatening kids, he asked uh, Zuckerberg if he would apologize. 
Zuckerberg gets up, turns to the grieving families in the uh, audience, and doesn't take responsibility, but he says he's sorry for what they went through. Hawley had a great day. He's got Democrats and Republicans behind him on this matter. Did he win his re-election yesterday afternoon? It did, not, it did not hurt him. It did not hurt him. He was, and I know how Senator Danforth feels about Senator Hawley, so it, it pains me to say this, and I mean it hmm. in a, as a compliment to Senator Hawley and a compliment to Senator Danforth. He reminded me of, of John Danforth. Uh, just the, his composure, his demeanor. He, he conveniently, as social media uh, was quick to point out, he never had, he never demanded the same kind of apologies of the gun manufacturers after so many school shootings in, in terms of hearings. But he was, he, he was, I mean, to, to be able to get somebody like Mark Zuckerberg to profusely perspire um, and and to turn around like he was a puppet on a string and apologize to these people it was it was not a bad day for him it was not a bad day for this family would put on that I would anybody would have apologized right. and because that's just the the spot they're in and right Josh Hawley should apologize for shoving them people out the way when he was trying to run out to capital from the riot <laughs> yeah. he well, started he, I, like I no, that did not help him it didn't help him with you, and and I don't think it helped him with people who are vehemently opposed to him. But in terms of you know everybody else, it, if you're an independent, I, I just think you might look well, at it I, differently. I think if you're an independent, you look at it one day and go, what <coughs> policies change? Uh, nothing. Right. I mean, but Zuckerberg did stand up and say sorry. I mean, is that how big of a victory is that really? I don't know. And I don't look it. I. As far as his chances in Missouri, he's already the Cook political partner. He's solid Republican. He's got a what they consider a safe seat. I think it's slightly less safe than the conventional wisdom because we the, the big unknown is Trump. We don't know right. how far. We just don't know what's going to happen. And so, and, and I, the Democrats finally have a really, I think they're behind Lucas Kuntz, who's a terrific candidate. So he's going to start with 40 or 42. I don't think it's in the bag for Hawley, but it would take a major problem at the top of the ticket. That's it. So this, none of this, I think, I none know. of this moves that needle. Right. Right. None of this moves right. that needle. No, Charlie's Charlie's right in terms of None of this moves that needle. And no, you know what, Ray? It just Today, doesn't. It, it's, this it doesn't is not 1975. Needle. Today, the issues don't matter. It's, are you in the news a lot? Are you well, whether you're Cory Bush name, or whether you're Josh Hawley or whatever. Right. Well, That's well, what well, matters. Well, Congress, Charlie? That's the Trump. Congress, Congressman Santos was in the news every day. Well, he resigned. He probably would have well, gotten reelected. No, I don't think so. I think <laughs> wait, was not uh, when you're in the, the news. Uh, DeSantis. He was like DeSantis, a, he in, was the like a in the news every day. DeSantis in the news every day. Not as much as just Trump. Thanks but, but, to you guys in the media. Not, no, no, Trump. You, thanks to you. Him, he's in yeah, a courtroom yeah. every five minutes. Exactly, right. exactly. See, you know what? Okay. He, he's got the highest fist recognition in the country. Mm -hmm. Okay, and he's known to a lot of people, Josh Hawley, for his fist. And that is true. Hurt. That is true. And I, it remains to be seen if that helped him or hurt him ah, overall. Well, we'll see. All right, what's next? Bill McClellan, I want to ask you about the earnings tax. This time, not a Republican from Jefferson County or St. Charles County, but a Democrat from the city. Steve Butts, South St. Louis, has uh, introduced a measure which would exempt those who make less than 150% of the poverty level, or about $22,000 for an individual. They would be exempted from the earnings tax, that 1% tax that residents and workers in the city have to pay. There's also a measure that would exempt remote workers, those who work for companies in St. Louis, but they're actually doing the work in St. Charles, they would be exempted too. But what do you think about this? Is this, is this changing the dynamic of the earnings tax uh, well, well, issue? Well, you know, I'm, I'm in favor of the earnings tax. and But I, I think that what a, any effort to get poor people exempted from any tax, I think that's a reasonable position. If you're making $22,000 a year and, and the legislature wants to exempt you from the earnings tax, I say fine. Whereas uh, the remote workers, I think they still ought to pay. I mean, just because the city, if the city goes completely broke, it hurts everybody. So I'm willing to give the 
gifted people who are making under 22 grand a break, but not the remote workers. Well, I'm willing to do that too, except for one reason. That's the camel nose in the tent thing, because, of, oh, if you did that, you do that. What are we talking about here? If you take 1% from the people making less than $22,000 in the city, you have probably, the city has probably lost, what, $22,000 or something? 2.5 million. Is it yeah, that much? I, I have well, a hard time okay. believing yeah. that. Oh, I don't. I'm sorry. I'll tell I, you what, I don't, yeah. and I think, what, what they ought to do in, in the gov world of government, they call it a pay for in, in Congress, which is how are you going to pay for this tax cut? Anybody that wants to bring up an idea like this, which sounds nice, should also bring up the idea of how you're going to pay for it. Mm -hmm. What's it's going to? That was set. Nick Dunn's and, and, and point. My, was it okay? Mm -hmm. And and I happen to think of all I. I think the city earnings tax is logical and fine and reasonable. <laughs> I do. I, I've always thought it. I will say the only Me people I, I felt like might have an argument, and I don't have to pay for for it, are the people who live in the city who have to pay it when they work outside of the city, which I think is the case. And that, to me, is a problem. I, I don't like penalizing people in the city for working outside. But again, I, you couldn't pay, you'd have to well, pay for you it. Know, the, I don't the law, think, the I law do says, not think. The law says, as you all know, that if you work outside the city, you can prorate your pay. And that was the way it was until COVID and Greg FX Daily, you know, the city official, decided to change the rules. So forever and a day, if you were working three months of the year in Portugal, you'd have to pay those three months, but it changed during COVID. Okay. So, so, so it, it's up to the okay, city so, right, to figure just, out. Just real quick. Uh, all right, August Bush the third used to helicopter in. Right now, if he had declared back in the day that you know what, I do most of my work on the telephone at home, and he didn't have to pay one percent on. You don't eight, think that he and others did that? <laughs> you don't think that their accountants figured that out? Just like all the pictures from but, but, but here's the, the Cardinals. Thing, but I don't that know out? that. But if the law said, "Hey, dude, you ain't got to pay," then the if, city if is jammed. If right. his accountant didn't tell him that, that accountant had malpractice. Well, here, I'll tell you what. Malpractice is the very people that hear from him the this people week. that yell <laughs> the people that yell the loudest about the city earning tax how bad it is are the same people who yell about the 911 service mm -hmm. not working and all the 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 services all the things. Well, that, everybody yells about that. Well, oh, okay, right. but I'm saying everybody's yelling about it. it. It's great if whether it's Rex Singfield, anybody else that wants to tear this down, we, name me what you're going to do in its place. Rams sir. money. Yeah, that's really two hundred sixty million dollars. That's going to last about start. ten minutes. Great. Yes. Bill Angle, greed and fraud. Yeah, that's or fraud and waste. Waste and fraud. fraud. Waste and fraud. Yeah. Actually, yeah. in this city, you probably could get a lot of money. Well, I actually went when, when well, Senator Angle talks about. He's talking about rural Missouri. That was All the yeah. counties. Well, that do that. and that was the thing when Nick Dunn, the spokesperson for Mayor Jones, was 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 uh, responding to the story. He was talking about the fact that public safety would probably be hardest hit. And I thought, I don't know if I would start there because public safety already has its own issues. But it's probably the point. biggest, whatever the biggest bill is would be yeah, the one yeah. that theoretically sure. would sure. be the one that would be hurt the most. Yeah. Alvin, speaking of public safety, uh, where do we begin with this bar PM episode? Uh, on December 18th, a police cruiser crashed into a bar in the 1700 block of South Broadway and the owner's husband was the guy, I think, who was let out with uh, um, handcuffs. Ray, is that correct? Was the owner's husband? Or was it the owner himself? Uh, according, uh, well, uh, well, there's some disputes. Okay, about okay. But, then, well, <laughs> but the next day... <laughs> that, that tells the story, de right. December 19th, <laughs> the city sent a letter saying you have, you have 60 days to repair this place, otherwise you'll be out of code, and the deadline is February the 19th. And that letter surfaced this week. Ray wrote about that. And uh, today the city did issue an apology, saying we're not, we're not going to shut you down, we're not going to condemn you because of the damage that we caused. So it was all okay? Well, I okay, this whole thing is just so nutty and the video is what the video is and all that but it's just like one of those like man was everybody just like out of their mind that night but that's how these things are all right two it's one thing like somebody hits a public you know a bar or whatever all right that's one if somebody the police or anybody else like ran into your house your first response might be kind of like ugly all right but as far as that letter is concerned i will say that one time a limb fell and took out like the power line in our house and city kirkwood came and fixed it and like immediately thereafter they said like hey you have to get this like fixed for real 
or kind of like, or else. Now, I didn't feel threatened, but it was just kind of like, you know, but I'm sure that letter was generated immediately because the electric company, you know, said like, hey, this happened, so thus, we, we got that letter. Maybe the same is true with this bar, like you got a hole in the bar and somebody come and inspects because they have to inspect to see, can you be open tomorrow? And once it was determined that this letter comes out automatically, the whole scene should go away. <laughs> Nobody should be charged. Everybody live happily ever after. Well, if we're responsible, well, let's fix the whole city and get right on with life. Let's talk about responsibility. I mean, first, you know, the police chief says, oh, I'm really sorry about this, but it doesn't seem to matter. And, and the mayor said, well, this is awful, but we're still sending him out the letter. I mean, But I think who, the who letter, it sounds like the around. letter actually, I mean, it almost sounded like the letter was sent so automatically yeah. that they probably overlap so between way, the mayor's statement. The mayor statement. of Kirkwood would not have known that we immediately got this letter. Right. It's just, I, right. right. To me, this is so outrageous. And I've talked to, admittedly, I'm biased, Javad Ghazadi, who is, I think, a terrific attorney. And, and he, he obviously got a big settlement over the kettling in, incident of my year. A great civil rights attorney, I think, deserves a lot of credit here. He... And I don't know if there's going to be a civil suit, but I wouldn't be surprised if there is. He makes the point that the husband was, in his opinion, beaten up by the cops, which is part of this has, hasn't been on the video. There's so many things that they messed up. The first one is unbelievably. And by the way, the... Unbelievably uh, what? What's the first well, okay, thing? Okay. I said Gabe Gore's got to drop those charges, and he hasn't. The misdemeanor charges, and the guy's got a hearing Friday, but uh, tomorrow. But unbelievably, if you saw the video... It, the police officer, who's not identified, I don't ran. I mean, just happened to go across Broadway, rammed into this building, and the idea that they did not give him a breathalyzer. I agree. They did not. Is I agree. So it's, it's crazy. Pretty incredible. And then they then then a different officer is the one who is alleged to have roughed up, you know, filed a complaint and. Uh, 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 for being pushed in the chest. And, and it, if you look, if you see the officer in the video, he's a very large man. If you see the person who's alleged to have pushed him in the chest, he is not a large well, man. Well, everyone behaved it's, badly, didn't they? Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm saying. They, they they after closing I, you, time, you know, I, mean, I think of all the times that you should be given a pass for ba behaving badly, it's the first hour after a police I cruiser no, no, I, I will crashes say, Ray, into your business. I, I, I looked sure at Substack, okay? and I saw the video of, of the yeah. encounter, and I thought the videographer was way out of line, dropping yeah. F-bombs and yelling at people driving by and, and getting in the officer's uh, business. I thought the responding officer was rude, and I thought that the guy who lived there who didn't hand over his ID was out of line, too. I, I, I don't. I, 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 I don't remember when the Webster Groves police hit my daughter's parked car. <laughs> I was out. I was upset. <laughs> it was on a Friday night. Does this car look drivable to you? I said the officer, get on the curb. Yeah. I hear you muttering. You well, you know I, what? I later told a friend, you know, I'm, I'm a middle class white guy and I'm used to the police. All of a sudden I saw the police. Right. <laughs> and, you know, so I can understand the guy getting upset, just, but everybody on the video yes. was yelling. You know, but there was a great moral lesson that I think we all learned this week, and it was, I don't know if I could be in this guy's shoes. He lost his daughter in a freak accident at a beauty salon where his daughter was supposed to be getting a, a manicure, and the woman who backed into the into the salon yeah. and killed his daughter called him the next day to apologize, and he said, it was a mistake. Mistakes happen. It was an accident. Right. It was an accident. Right, right, right. and and he, he he knew the woman. I mean, they right. he was they were. Right. She was a friend of the daughter, and I thought so too. I thought, what a nice story. Yeah, right. And there and it was on the front I'm, page of the post. And, and they're that. filing papers right now to sue them. No, we don't know that to be true. We don't know that to be true. I guess uh, that's going to On that. what planet do the police crash and out of his vehicle I'm sure and go in and arrest somebody? We would not be given a breathalyzer if we if the same thing happened. When and how can if we, bar, yeah. if we crash into a bar, if we crash into a tree, we would get it. If we crash into a bar, it oh, would be crash into a gay bar. Oh, it would be hate crime. Hey, yeah. Let's throw in the fact <laughs> that before the video was out, the police first said the police <laughs> officially. Now I'm not about the official police said it was a dog. It was a deer. And then it, it wasn't a dog. And then it was a car and a curb. And then he was distracted by his police radio, which is a very bizarre excuse. And it's like you know the, the way this was. It's bad accidents yes. happen. 
coming well, into right. this was courtroom very, 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 very strange. It's, yeah, very it's strange. true, and I think Alvin's right. Yeah. Someone should have said, okay, I got connection with the building trades. Let's fix this up within 48 hours, <laughs> and there, let's do the GoFundMe, and uh, the yeah. police, <clears throat> you got to send over some flowers and some steaks or whatever <laughs> right. it is, right. well, and well, let's they move should on. Need a GoFundMe. I mean, the city should be picking this up. Uh, yeah, yeah, I agree, absolutely. I agree. Okay. Absolutely. Let's see what people had to say about last week's program, shall we? Oh, I was disappointed by the pro-Israeli opinions expressed by more than one panelist. People on both sides of this conflict have suffered unthinkable tragedies piled on top of each other, and the only hope for peace in the future is to look at both sides and find some common ground. That from Shelley Probst of University City. When did they ban the sale of gasoline downtown? Years ago, many of the parking garages and parking lots used to sell gasoline. The MAC used to have gas pumps on their parking lot. Mansion House used to have a gas station as part of that complex. That from Bill from Rock Hill Hager of Rock Hill. Craig Regans wrote, I lived in the building at 1300 Convention Plaza, which is directly behind the Shell Station. That station constantly had, and still has, a gauntlet of panhandlers standing outside. Removing the panhandlers would be a step in the right direction. Thanks, Craig. You can write us, care of 9PBS, 3655 Olive Street, St. Louis, Missouri, 63108. Don't forget the emails, Donnybrook at 9PBS.org, and use hashtag DonnybrookSTL on your social media. And we'll see what Josh Holly has to say about that. Hey, uh, comment line, call it, 314-512-9094. And listen to us on your favorite podcast source. There they are. And a quick reminder that Donnie Bash is April the 13th, and you can get your tickets at 9pbs.org slash Donnie Bash. It's the best deal in town. April, oh, it's April 11th. Okay, I got the date wrong. That's 5.30 p.m. Be there or be square. Thank you very much for joining us for this edition of Donnybrook. Stay warm, and we'll see you next week. Donnybrook is made possible by the support of the Betsy and Thomas Patterson Foundation and the members of 9PBS.